Okay, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, welcome to the Gossip Intellectual Podcast with comedian Royce Wynn, where we talk entertainment, politics, sports. We talk about it all. Anything that's gossipy we want to talk about. How are you? I hope you're good. It's Friday afternoon. I hope you're enjoying your day. By the time you get this, it might be Friday evening. Uh, but either way, it's Friday. You made it to the weekend okay you can breathe (sighs) relax you did it you did it okay celebrate the small accomplishments man you made it to friday evening afternoon uh pull out that wine that beer i'm doing okay i'm doing pretty good man this was a, a replenishing week for me i worked but then i also rested our R and W and R, W and R. Those are my initials. It's R and W. Royce Wynn. Um, yeah. So any of the uh, astrology people, R and Ws. But uh, yeah, yeah. I um, you know, I wanted to clear my head. <laughs> Constantly clear my head. Right. That's the work you do. As I, I guess as like an entertainer, a media person. It's just it's all about what's going on in your head up here. Um, I'm pointing to my head if you're listening, uh, because that's that's your your biggest asset, right? That's the thing that you need uh, to do the most. So I had the rest. I had a meditating day. That was good. I felt good, and then immediately after, life hit you. So <laughs> uh, the med- the calmness of the meditation lasted about ten minutes. Either way, on some lower level you're still a little bit more balanced than you were before you took time for yourself take time for yourself okay we are the privileged generation okay 50 and under we can actually take time for ourselves our parents never knew how to do that our grandparents didn't take time for themselves right maybe a coffee right they didn't have the tools that we have so um did that, man, and, uh, you know, f- feel a little better, <laughs> you know, uh, took a break from some things, right, <laughs> and uh, I didn't realize how much it was affecting me, <laughs> it was affecting me a lot, and I was like, you know what, I need to pause just a little bit, all right, I can't keep taking in this energy all day, every day, every day, it's just consuming me. Uh, and when I say this thing, you know what? I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, I don't even want to put that energy out there right now. I'm just glad it's not affecting me how it was affecting me. All right. So, uh, I have a little bit more energy cause I wasn't taking in more energy. Now this thing also sometimes gives me energy, inspires me, but it's, it's a lot. It's just a lot. Okay. And I need to get back to me, back to Royce. So get back to yourself. Sometime uh, when you need to. Uh, Nobody Wants This is in season two. Great season ending. Um, I was like, what's going to happen? Are they going to be together or not? (laughs) I am living through you. I am the rabbi in my head. (laughs) Um, I feel like I have intuition. I was like, am I that smooth? Mm, Sometimes. You know, depending on the day, (laughs) I can be clever and charming, and sometimes I could be awkward and clammy. Depends how I'm feeling that day. (laughs) Am I a rabbi good? No. (laughs) I got demons, baby. (laughs) Am I a good person overall? Yes. Yes, I was thinking about that. I was like, what is women's attraction to me i think it's because i'm a good person i think the bar is so low that this is like i just want somebody who's somewhat good (laughs) like royce royce is somewhat good we'll take him right i hope they see more than that in me i have a lot to offer okay i'm not just some goody two shoes that's going to give you a safe uh ending to your life or safe uh i don't know rest of your life (laughs) This period of your life. Okay. But that's, I, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take uh, being deemed a good person. Who knows? Who knows what girls are attracted to? It's like 50 things, right? 
What turns them on? It's a 50 thing list. And then one little thing, you get the ick. I was watching the show. She got the ick because he said an Italian word wrong. That's all it takes for you to just leave me. <laughs> you wonder why men are so scared of commitment. Okay. This is New York City. There's police sirens in the background. Probably be an amb- Is that an ambulance or a police? It's always one or the other. Uh, so we're ignoring that and keep on going. Uh, don't ignore the sirens in your life, though. I, I feel like that was in some self-help book. Right? <laughs> don't don't ignore the sirens. <laughs> Watch Oprah develop yourself. Um, but yeah, I found out it was the two sisters if you watch the show i just uh follow their podcast and then i unfollowed because i kept seeing them uh too much but uh yeah it was the two sisters only time i saw them was on the david space show and i was like who are these they're like i guess they're like the more humble uh hiltons (laughs) they seem really down to earth uh very charming and very very likable okay the podcast in real life is uh very fun to watch uh that sisterly uh bond and i wish i remember their name i remember one's i think their names are sarah and aaron and i can't remember the name the last name um i good at remember last names so um yeah man uh you know constantly growing constantly learning and uh that's all you can ask for right i think that's a turn on male or female right somebody who's always working on themselves always trying to better themselves not be annoying like the guy at the cafe this morning had a loud talker right i had to i like to get my coffee and balance myself right we all got our ways of getting ourselves together and it was interrupted by a loud talker and i'm just like self-awareness is real man you know just know what your flaws are you know work on them nobody's going to be perfect you're never going to completely get rid of your flaws you are who you are Right, I'm a goofy guy. All right, I don't take things seriously, and sometimes I gotta get serious. I gotta get serious, and sometimes I have to take care of things. I'm a nonchalant, out in the world guy, so that's my flaw. Okay, <laughs> so whatever girl gives me, no, you're not getting a serious person. Right, you be like, where's we need to take care of this? I'm like, I'm gonna avoid that. <laughs> um, this guy has a deep baritone voice. And he goes to coffee shops. You have a deep baritone voice? Don't go to coffee shops. Okay, if you do, don't talk. Just breathe. (sighs) Bring a book with you. (laughs) Okay. But don't talk. Uh, I was outside, though. I was outside to avoid other people talking. I hate talkers. I hate giggly, chatty. I I hate people that go to groups and cafes. Okay, go to a loud restaurant. If you and your friends are going to catch up and do the kiki kiin, okay? Don't kiki kiin in a coffee shop, especially in the morning where people are trying to wake up. Now, my morning is later than most people's mornings. My morning is 10 o'clock and after, but it's still morning, okay? The sun is not all the way out until like 12 o'clock. It doesn't get really hot until 3 p.m., okay? So don't fucking judge me, okay? So don't come in groups, take up all the seats, and then kiki. Anyway, this guy, baritone voice. Listen, this is the loud talk. He's my nemesis. This is like a Seinfeld episode. Okay. <laughs> Every day I'm like, is loud talker here? Ah, there he is. Oh, he's leaving. Good, 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 good. But today I sat outside and he was on the phone. Okay, I think he runs like a nonprofit or something. I saw him with some kids and he just kept walking by talking. Right? And you know, you can't, you're trying to get in the zone, but then zzzzz. The, 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 the mumbling in your ear deep baritone voice great voice by the way like if you're dating him you're like i fucking love his voice oh i fucking dj myself to his voice but otherwise if you're sitting outside a coffee shop and you're trying to read or listen to your favorite radio show in the morning it's hard to concentrate with in background so all i'm saying is be self-aware that drives me crazy in a city that's constantly moving. Don't walk slow. Don't stop in the middle of the street and look at your phone or do something. Keep it moving. Keep it quiet. All right, let's get into the show. I do try not to judge people like the loud talker because I'm like, everybody grew up different. Okay, I was lucky enough to grow up in a balanced household and just, you know, God given ability 
to always be kind of grounded, right? Sometimes it it doesn't even like you meet people and just like you grew up in complete chaos, but you are so calm and bring me so much peace. And then other people, you're just like, okay, you never figured it out. And we're talking about Erica Min and Safari. Okay, peep there putting out videos of each other doing crazy doing crazy stuff. I saw Erica Mina climbing on the wall over walls and I said, I know she's from the Bronx. And I looked it up, she's from the Bronx. Okay. <laughs> That's the type of girl you get. When you get a Bronx girl, you get somebody who's climbing over walls. I think she's posting crazy text messages. It's just both of them posting each other nude, naked, doing embarrassing stuff. And it's just like, take us out the group chat. Okay. We don't even care what y'all are doing. We know y'all are two buffoons. We're worried about the children because their parents are in their 30s. You should have figured out your shit by now. Okay. Toxic love isn't cute after 30s. Okay. Get your toxic love out in your 20s. Go to therapy. And all right, there should be no more craziness, especially for the world to see, for your children to see. Okay. If we want to see people climbing over things, you can go to the zoo. All right, and you can go to the, the the monkey section and see them swinging around on stuff and yelling at each other. Ooh, ah! That's for monkeys, not for people in relationships. All right, toxic love. It's not cute. It's entertaining to adults, okay, not to kids who are depending on these people to guide them through life. Hey, mom, how did you handle this situation? I went to that motherfucker's house and I climbed on the ladder and I hopped over his wall. What? <laughs> Get these children to the grandmother's house. Have them eating soup and uh, watching stories or something. <laughs> the stories for these grandmas, though, are VH1 and the reality show. Ooh, grandma got to watch a reality show. <laughs> I guess that's the theme of today's show. Just work on yourself, man. Okay, nobody should drive you to be going crashing out on the internet, dropping videos and stuff. What are you trying to prove? Only videos you should be dropping should be to lawyers and judges so you can get custody. Otherwise, we don't want to see that. Okay. This is worse than the Diddy Party. What is going on? What are y'all on? Okay, obviously there's drugs involved. Okay, no sober individual would be doing this type of stuff. Do you love somebody that much? Which is, that's crazy stuff. Now, I'm guessing Erica Mina must have some good good. Because every relationship she's in, it's a crazy situation. People just get crazy with her. <laughs> okay. I guess it is somewhat fun. Girls talk about that. That's not my jam. I don't like crazy love. I don't like toxic love. Like I told you, I had to take a break this week for whatever I was dealing with. I, I got to be centered. I don't, I don't want to be off my off my steez or whatever you want to say. So uh, Erica Mina and Safari, get it together and act like adults. You're raising children. Now, there's always a spectrum. Okay, so there's, there's always the, the zany, the crazy... The out there, the wild, and then there's the grounded, the deep, the the the, the spiritual, the um, reaching to the higher power, and um, you know connecting you. And that's Kendrick Lamar. Okay, the guy can do no wrong, and I think it's because he stays in a grounded place to himself, where he just takes it all in. Okay, he's not constantly looking for. Outside validation. He validates himself. And then he gives you ways that you can validate yourself and find peace. And um, he takes time to think about things. To put things together. And so when, you, when, when he does do something, you take him seriously. You're like, this is not a guy that's constantly out there. Okay? We only seen him do push-ups one time outside. Okay? Okay? Everybody else to always run around the outside in the streets. Okay, we seen Kendrick Lamar work out one time, and that one workout has gone viral. Okay, <laughs> that's how happy you are, we are to see him do anything. Uh, reason I'm bringing him up is because he just uh, endorsed Dochi. I hope that's how you say it, Dochi, uh, who everybody's excited about. Um, 
people are kind of saying she's kind of like the new Lauren Hill. Uh, she she's deep. She's got some substance. Okay, if she's with in Kendrick Lamar's camp, she's with TDE. Why wouldn't she? Uh, the mixtape was fire. A couple of bangers on there. Woo ha! She got. I like I like how she raps. She's got like a Busta Rhymes vibe too to her too. Artsy, weird. I like it, but also saying some shit now. Some of the shit is just shit I already been through, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> not that interesting to me, but for her age group and for what she's experienced in life, of course, okay? All right, we don't want to compare, all right, Lauren Hill is one in a million people where the advice that she gave at like 22 years old still sticks with people to this day, <laughs> uh, but we're excited about her. She's a real artist. Okay, the bar is low in the dating game. The bar is low in the rap game. Okay, it's just like, does anybody have substance anymore? That's all. That's all we want, right? Just somebody who has something to say that can add to my life, make my life a little bit easier. Okay, don't make people's lives harder. All right, don't be a loud talker. <laughs> okay, don't come with chaos. Life is chaotic enough. All right. Uh, so shout out to uh, Dochi and we'll hear her and Kendrick together. The way both of them rap, I think I think they they could do something. I am. I'm a, I'm excited about that. I didn't think it would come so soon, right? Because she was on the Joe Budden podcast and they were like, "Would you want to work with Kendrick?" She was like, "I'm not going to ask," which is a great answer. Um, she was like, "If he wants to endorse me, he wants to," and he did it fast. Right, like a month later, boom, in her in his stories. So uh, that's big. Push her out there, right? So uh, look forward to 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 hearing more from her, and uh, excited about that. It's black woman leading us right now. It's black woman's time. All right, so let's talk about Kamala Harris. Hey, yes, we talk about it all the time. As a black woman, you have to go in environments where you're the minority. Where you have to overperform, excel in places where people don't want you to. Where the pressure's on. A little mistake, a little slip up, and boom. You're not ready. You're disqualified. Kamala Harris went into Fox News and dog walked a guy that looked like a pit bull Brett Bayer. Okay. He tried to over talk her. She stood her ground. He tried to trip her up. She stood her ground. She did so good that he had to apologize the next day for playing the wrong clip about Trump talking about the enemy within. She won that interview. Okay, I saw the most highest rated uh, Fox News interview they've had in a while or something like that. And she came out on top. It doesn't get any better than that. Okay, when you're willing to go into enemy territory and hold your own and come out alive with the sword still in your hand. I mean, what else do you want from her? She's done it all. Howard Stern, call her daddy. She's out here destroying everything. And I'm trying to be professional, but I'm very attracted to her right now. <laughs> her hair is always done. And she's talking about helping... My life get better and people that I care about's lives get better. <laughs> Kamala Harris is bae. Kamala Harris is brat. Um, yeah, man. I think uh, everybody was nervous. They didn't, they didn't know whether it would be a right move. And being the leader that she is, she went in there and did her black woman pointing finger thing and said, don't interrupt me. I got something to say. They tried to trip up and, and see if she would call the American people stupid. Come on. This is a veteran. You think she's going to insult people that might vote for her? Come on. That's easy work. All right. That's like when the hater dude tries to say something about the girl that he thinks you might be dating, trying to get you to say something crazy so he can go back, run and tell her. Come on. We know that move. We're not falling for that. Uh, so shouts out to Kamala Harris. She's making all the right moves, man. She's saying all the right things, killing hecklers, uh, just out here doing Kamala, doing Kamala things. I just want to go back to the apology real quick because that is big. All right, Fox News, we know, does not always tell the truth. If you're not a fan of Fox News, 
And um, they caught a lot of, uh, well, they, they got sued and they lost. To, was it Domino? Billions of dollars uh, for lying about the election. So uh, you would think they would tread lightly. And uh, well, they, they are trying to lightly. And so for him to come the next day and uh, apologize in an interview where he was supposed to get her to be apologizing, she should be backtracking the next day or trying to uh, maybe flip something she said wrong. But he did. OK, that's big. That's all I'm saying. Big. Great job. OK, so there's always aftermath after things. And uh, Jim Gavkin caught some uh Aftermath for this Al Smith, uh, I don't know, Catholic Church dinner type of thing. Uh, I love the name Al Smith. That, that sounds like an old NBA player before the NBA was the NBA. He sounds like an ABA player. <laughs> Al Smith used to do it. He used to have a finger roll. <laughs> All right. So this is like some type of dinner for um, raising uh, money for Catholic Church charities or something. Jim Gaffigan was the host. Uh, impossible room to do comedy in. It's just a bunch of politicians, rich people on both sides. Trump was there. Chuck Schumer was there. RFK Jr. was there. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so I don't know. I, it's it's like a correspondence dinner for Catholics. And uh, Jim Gaffigan got <laughs> some... Uh, Backlash for making a joke about it was something about a kitty, and uh, this won't be the first time he grabs a pussy. Got some groans, I thought it was hilarious. And shout out to Jimmy Afghan for making fun of the president to his face, all right? Because the uh, Trump never makes fun of anybody to their face, it's always a, at rallies around his supporters, right? That's how people like him do coward bullies only around. Only around people uh, that they know have their back. So Kamala didn't go. And uh, she did a sketch with Molly Shannon. And she did some joke like I wouldn't make fun of uh, Catholics or something like that. That's like making fun of Detroit in Detroit. So that was the line. Okay. Um, People loved it. Okay. Now Don Lemon didn't think it was funny. (laughs) He didn't say that, but it seemed like he didn't think it was funny. <laughs> he was on his live like, did you think it was funny, though? <laughs> it doesn't need to be funny. You're a president. She's not a comedian. Okay, nobody's holding her to SNL standards. Molly needs to be funny. And Molly was great. She's one of the greatest uh, sketch performers of all time. Um, looked great, by the way. At first, I thought it was somebody much younger. Um, so all you need is a a, a, a zinger. Okay, because nobody expects you to be funny. Okay, that is the plight of the community. Everybody's expecting you to be funny, so it's 10 times harder to be funny. You're the president. Nobody expects you to be funny. So the fact that you have a sense of humor is like, oh, right? It's like when the hot girl is funny, it's like, oh, she made a joke. The non hot girl, you should be funny. Okay, you should be making jokes. I'm just joking. Um, so shout out to her. Uh, okay, so at this dinner, uh, Trump gives a speech. Okay, and he's basically dissing Biden, uh, saying he likes him now. <laughs> that he's not running against him. Real mature. Okay, uh, this is a seventy-eight year old man talking about now he likes somebody because they dropped out of a competition with him. Uh, this is the type of guy that is going to be. Uh, t- could possibly be running the country, okay? And uh, that the same thing about Kamala. Uh, he doesn't like her right now, but um, when she, uh, if, if he wins, he'll he'll like her more after it's all over. And uh, people are laughing because that is a ridiculously immature thing to say about somebody when you're over fifty years old, okay? I was very competitive when I was 12 and thought, yeah, the person on the other team was the enemy. Now that I'm an adult, especially if I'm running for something that could possibly help people. Hey, it's not that I don't like you, but uh, right now you're my competition. Okay, (laughs) That's how you should look at it. But uh, it's annoying 
that uh, Trump got bigger laughs than Jim Gaffigan, even though people were laughing at him. <laughs> That's how it goes. Shout out to Jim Gaffigan, though. Round of applause for Jim Gaffigan for having the balls to go into that type of environment and try to tell jokes. It's just like, it's like trying to tell jokes to monks. Like, no, nobody is there to have a good time. <laughs> and he was getting laughs, too. Um, you know, but you're never going to get the whole room. <laughs> right? Some people are going to laugh. Some people aren't. That's just how it's going to go. Because it's just an awkward setup. Okay? You got Chuck Schumer there. You got Trump there. You got RFK Jr. there. You just got all the people who are trying to destroy each other. And one room, right? It might as well be WWWF, right? <laughs> or WWE. Okay, you might as well have Dave Batista there. Okay. <laughs> After he was talking to all that shit. So it was just like, just so much tension. Uh, but it's such a high stakes election. Like, this has been the most brutal, low level. Kamala Harris has, has chosen to go low with Trump. You have to. He took it there um, to win this election and win people over and just debunk all the trash that he's spewing out. I mean, it's stuff about migrants, um, Kamala's unintelligent, just stuff that a normal presidential race, nobody would say. (laughs) They would just stick to policies and how people haven't done right by the American people. But uh, this guy is just a different breed, man. So uh, this Catholic dinner, uh, which I don't think accomplished anything. Uh, Everybody was at. Now, the thing that caught on Twitter X was that Cheryl Hines was canoodling with RFK Jr. All right, the clip I saw, he's looking annoyed. Uh... Obviously, because all the headlines of him trying to impregnate a 30-year-old news journalist, uh, love bombing a, a news journalist, which he denied. And this is just, I don't know why would you would deny a story that uh, about a journalist where journalists are on. Like, there's so many journalists on this story. Why would you just try to lie like that? And she's still caressing the man's beard. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, performing for the cameras, insane. I'm like, what type of dick does RFK Jr. have? <laughs> Newfound respect for this man. Okay, and they saying he's been caught cheating multiple times, and Cheryl Hines, who is a cutie by the way, is out here still cuddled up with this man. I guess they had to show face. Because then everybody's going to write about how they weren't together or if one of them went and and the other one didn't or if they didn't go at all, right? Remember that one time Jada Pinkett and Will Smith didn't show up on a red carpet? But people are just like, Cheryl, get up. Get up, Cheryl. <laughs> Come on. This is like, is it the money? Like, what is it? Like, distance yourself from this man. But I always say, you attract who you are. So, she's a little crazy too. All right, She's a comic, so I wouldn't put it past her. Um, the, he was, he's been crazy. Okay? So, she was always into it. Right? So, I don't know how she feels now. Obviously, she's embarrassed. I mean, it's just, you know, no matter how crazy a guy is. But I'm just like, you know, guys like him... Bill Clinton, they must know that they got some type of situation where they can do this. Like, you know, if a guy is fearing for his life, he's not going to be crazy like that. All right. We all saw how to be a player. Shout out to Pierre. It could get nasty for you. You can end up in a basement somewhere. Women are crazy. (laughs) And she's making white women look bad (laughs) because as men, whether like white women are easiest to manipulate. All right. Pushover. You look like a pushover, sure. So uh that just blew my mind. Right? I'm like the the, the dude from Breaking Bad. She he can't keep getting away with that. 
All these bad men. Keep getting W's. Because y'all white women won't. Check them. Check your man. <laughs> Scare the shit out of RFK Jr. I mean, he's not scared of bears. But come on. Jesus Christ. Okay, because I think what my generation is learning is just like the development of self and who you've become. I don't know. Spiritually, as like a whole human being, is just more important than like status, money, career. Because if you don't just have that like inner work or that inner love for yourself, you end up like Cheryl Hines. Okay, <laughs> you end up getting embarrassed. There's always a downfall. You end up like Diddy. Okay. So I think that's what the millennials and Gen Z has kind of figured out. Some of Gen X is like, don't chase the accolades. Don't chase the status. Chase development of self. You know, obviously you need money to survive. Um, but it's it's not the most important thing. And it's a constant back and forth, right? There's always people like, if I, what is it? You're not just... Um, you're okay, you just don't have money. That's not true. <laughs> okay. More money, more problems. There's more things to keep up with. There's just more status. There's people asking for money. People treat you differently when they think you have money. There's more stresses that come with money. I'm not saying money doesn't solve some problems, yes. But if you haven't done the inner work, if you don't like yourself... If you don't teach people how to treat you, if you don't treat yourself a certain way, then the money can ruin you. Okay, we're seeing it left and right. You know, not to harp on it, but a lot of people are getting out of here young. You know, because they don't like themselves. They don't feel good about themselves. They feel ashamed. Give yourself grace. That's what I always say. Give yourself grace. Don't beat yourself up. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has flaws. Focus on what you're doing great. You know, there's people that have given so much to the world that can't even be alone in a room with themselves. They're always numbing themselves with stuff. So just remember that. I think uh, that's what's happening a lot in the dating game. People are just looking for good character now. They're just looking for good people because it's more important. Hey, we're having lighting issues today. I didn't, I didn't charge my lighters, but that's fine. Nobody, most of you are listening to this. Um, yeah, so it's just like watching these successful people embarrass themselves over and over again because they didn't stay in therapy. <laughs> As somebody who hasn't been to therapy for the past three weeks, um, but I feel like I'm in a good place. <laughs> the person I've been working with has gotten me to a uh, pretty solid foundation, so... I, I, I got I got the right tools. I know what to do. <laughs> so been a replenishing week. Cheryl needs a replenishing week. So I hope she's uh, going to yoga class this week. <laughs> Just get out. <laughs> All right. Now somebody RFK Jr. can't play with is Remy Ma. I don't know where Remy Ma is from. The Queen Queens, the Bronx. I don't know. Anybody with a deep voice, <laughs> don't, don't play with them. Okay? Cardi B's, Nicki Minaj's, those are crazy girls that will stab you. Okay? All right, so Remy Ma uh, posted, I never cheated on nobody. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> right? And people are like, well, what are you talking about? Because you haven't addressed anything in a long time. We've seen a lot of pictures. We've seen you out with Papoose Jr., Papoose Clone. <laughs> Baby Papoose, okay? Who is he? What's the situation with him? Okay, why y'all not together at events and stuff? Okay, and why did you let this run for so long? And then the battle rappers are saying that stuff happened. And then that dude is saying he got into it with Papoose. He's threatening Papoose. What happened? Shout out to you for keeping it on the low. But we want to know because we thought y'all were just the prime example of love, right? You did a bid. It was like a movie, right? I stick with you through the bid. It was like a Tubi movie. We thought it was going to last forever, ever. Now, as more facts come out, you people, we got to have common sense, okay? They were only together for like two or three years before she went in, okay? <clears throat> what do they say? It takes like five years to really get to know somebody. 
Okay. Um, people are saying people are saying what did Papoose do while she was in? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know the inner workings. But you could tell from the interviews and stuff when she came out, came home, she was a different person. They were in a different place. And um, things weren't as peachy. Okay, which is how relationships work. That's what I said. I said it's easy to be in a relationship with somebody in jail. All you gotta do is show up to be on the phone. Mariah the scientist. That's easy. Daddy and I your baby, that's all you gotta say. But when you're living together, which I think is just a lot of people's downfall, it's just like people just live differently, okay? That can be annoying. Here's a relationship tip. Get out the house. Okay, don't be on top of each other all day. You're gonna get on each other's nerves. Okay, give people space and and communicate. Okay, all right. If if you don't like something, let's talk about it. All right, don't let this shit bubble. And then you be like, why do you always fucking leave paper next to the trash can? All right, tell them, hey, when you leave paper next to the trash can, that bothers me. Okay. So can we either get somebody to clean up the paper trash can, or can you just make sure you got a fucking shredder in your room or something? <laughs> so who knows? People are saying they just grew apart. She seventy. She, she never cheated on anybody. Now she doesn't have to address it. It's her relationship, her life. So I guess that's that's the route that she took, and she was just like, I'm not gonna address this. And she was like, I'll give you one little sound bite, and that's it. I'm out. So I guess that's what she did. Okay, I did talk about Cheryl Hines. I did compare it to Remy Ma. Uh, maybe that was wrong. Maybe it wasn't. But Taylor Swift has walked out and did a promo, I guess, for her tour to Sexy Red's song. So they might be working together. Okay. I can actually see it. I could see them working together. I could see them doing a, a song together. I don't know. There's something <laughs> non substantial, no substance. <laughs> Commercial about Sexy Red, and I can see Taylor Swift just figuring it out. Taylor Swift will put the song together, and she'll be like, Sexy Red, just rap for 45 seconds right here. <laughs> ah, me and Taylor Swift. Uh. <laughs> the most annoying, uh, best vibe rapper of all, Sexy Red. <laughs> Save your money, Sexy Red. <laughs> no, I love Sexy Red. She's unapologetically herself. And that's good. She likes herself. Okay? A lot of artists out here don't like themselves. We just talked about that. All right? Uh, Taylor Swift looks great. Am I starting to like Taylor Swift? I've hated Taylor Swift for years. <laughs> but her little walkout was kind of cute. Her outfits have been kind of cute. I'm actually looking at it like, oh, is Taylor Swift getting cute? What? Travis Kelsey is looking worse and Taylor Swift is looking better. Maybe that's why he got the weird haircut. He was like, listen, I'm going to look like a drunk policeman and you just do your glow up thing. And then people won't be like, ooh, the nerdy girl got with the athlete. They'll be like, oh, the down and out Ben Affleck looking policeman got with the girl on her glow up. The, the cool, <laughs> cute singer. Who knows? Uh, <clears throat> but she was holding the cat. That's a diss to J.D. Vance and the Trump campaign. Childless cat ladies. Uh, she's a childless cat lady. Probably maybe one of the most successful in terms of financially. Childless cat ladies in the world. Uh, and she's doing a lot. So shout out to Taylor Swift. Uh, shout out to uh, Loving Yourself. Okay. You don't have to get a cat. All right, just affirm yourself. Be proud of yourself. Hey, man, the fact that you made it through the day, you don't know what you did for somebody. All right, one little smile, one little wink, sharing your voice, sharing your experiences. Uh, that's it for the day. That's the Gossip Intellectual with Voice Wink. Thanks so much for listening, man. Wish you the best. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And uh, enjoy this little bit of sun. It's about to get cold out. All right, bye.